Welcome to the VIP Masterclass Series. I'm Josh Wright, and today's video is dedicated to Bociek. Um, and he says the following, Hey there, Josh. Just wondering if you've started on the VIP video I requested. If not, I'd like to replace that request with this one, or if you could touch up on this subject a little bit in a future video. So perfect timing, because I was actually filming this today. He emailed me this yesterday. His previous request was like over a month ago because we had so many lined up. Just in regards to articulation in Mozart, specifically the first movement of the K282, I'm pretty confident for the third, second and third movement, but I performed the first movement, which I thought would be the most comfortable for my teacher. And in his words, I played it beautifully, but I did not play it stylistically and played it in a more romantic manner. And that playing in a conservatory setting, examiners picked this up and set it off as red flags. I believed I listened to too many recordings in my playing over pedaled and lost some definition in the individual slurs and breaks between phrases. So I was wondering if you could make a video on or touch on some things of detaching notes, separating phrases in Mozart's as well as pedaling uh, in Mozart, just stylistic things, I suppose. Um, and let's address that. And then we're going to get to his other question, which has more to do with practice regimen. Um, so Wojciech, that's a great question, and this is a very subjective question. I remember I played um, for Babayan, uh, Sergei Babayan, uh, a Mozart sonata, which I'd worked very hard on, and he said, okay, Joshua, I must say, this is really no good at all. And, and we kind of had the same type of lesson. Every teacher is going to be different. Some like really conservative tastes. Others are a little bit more liberal. Babayan was much more liberal. He wanted me to be much more expressive. So the two schools of thought um, kind of, one of them you may use a bit more pedal, the other you might be a bit more dry. And having played on a forte piano, um, this is a piano forte, uh, you know, our modern piano. A forte piano had like leather hammers, much smaller instrument, um, didn't, wasn't as, you know, grand. It's not as big. It's very tiny. It's almost like just a slightly bigger harpsichord, to be honest. So um, I had this very wealthy teacher at Michigan um, who taught one of my classes, and she had like a collection that was like pretty much priceless in her house of like a Pleyel piano, an Erard piano, a Broadwood piano, a piano from the you know time of Schumann it was unbelievable and she had a forte piano in her house and it was very interesting we'd play on that every week we studied a lot of Mozart on that so having said that it doesn't have the same type of sustain on the forte piano that it does on the modern piano so for instance if you played and Steinway is known for its amazing sustain so like this is I mean the piano is still ringing I mean might even keep ringing for like 30 seconds to a minute. I mean, it's a really long sustain, not as much on those pianos. So you can have a little bit more liberty with releasing things, as you said. Um, let's just play a little bit of this in the two different styles. I'm gonna play a very romantic style to start with. But still in good taste. play a much more dry style and you'll see the difference and both sound good in their own respects
gosh, I don't know. You want to play the ornaments, or the, yeah, the ornamentation with the beat. So I wouldn't want to go, that's a more romantic thing to do. And even if you are playing more romantically, still do them on the beat. That's stylistically better. You can tell the second one has a lot more kind of airiness to it. The first one's much more blended and colorful. Uh, Babayan tends to be on the first um, scale and my um, first teacher uh, tended to be more on that dry scale um, that I studied with for 15 years. She was amazing. Uh, Professor Duhlmeyer, she was unbelievable. She studied with Leonard Schur and Leon Fleischer, so have she has excellent taste, especially in Mozart. So both are fine. Let's go over some of the things that I was doing in there. First of all, when you have arpeggio... Thank you so much for watching. I've listed two links in the description below. One of them is to download this full video that you've just watched the sample for. The other is to view the entire library of VIP Masterclass series videos. I hope you've enjoyed this. Have a great week. Good luck in your practice sessions.